Video game emulation has played a huge role in the preservation, accessibility, and understanding of gaming history. From its humble beginnings as an underground hobby, to becoming a widely accepted practice amongst gamers, enthusiasts, and even developers, whether they admit that or not. Emulation has allowed people to revisit classic titles, study game development, and in some cases, breathe new life into forgotten gaming systems. So let's start at the beginning. The roots of video game emulation date back to the early 1990s. During the rise of home computing, personal computers have become powerful enough to simulate the behavior of older hardware systems like arcade machines and early consoles, allowing hobbyist programmers to attempt recreating games. Early emulators like MAME, which stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator, released in 1997, aimed to preserve arcade games by emulating their hardware. MAME's mission was, from the start, focused on preservation rather than commercial distribution, and it became a benchmark for future emulation efforts. At this stage, emulation was still a niche activity, confined to tech-savvy users with a deep interest in the technical side of gaming hardware. The distribution of ROM, which stands for read-only memory, the files used to store game data, was legally murky, as these files were often shared without permission from the copyright holders. But as the internet expanded, these games spread through online communities, bringing retro gaming to a broader audience. As computing power improved, the emulation of home consoles became a significant aspect of gaming culture. By the mid-1990s, Nintendo Entertainment System, otherwise known as NES, and Sega Genesis emulators began to surface, with early versions of Nesticle, a NES emulator becoming widely popular. These programs allow users to play console games on their PCs, making gaming more accessible, especially for those who no longer had access to original hardware or game cartridges. The release of ZSNES in 1997 brought Super Nintendo Entertainment System games to PC players. ZSNES and its competitors like SNES 9X gave gamers the ability to revisit 16-bit classics like Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and Chrono Trigger. For the first time, players could also use features that were impossible on original hardware, such as save states and fast forwarding, adding convenience and new ways to experience these classics. By the late 1990s and early 2000s, emulation of fifth generation consoles like the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64 began to emerge. Emulators like EPSXE and Project 64 allow players to run games from the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 on their PCs. The complexity of these consoles presented a greater challenge to emulator developers, but progress continued at an impressive rate. With the popularity of emulation rising, the gaming industry began to take notice, leading to legal disputes over copyright and intentional property. Companies like Nintendo, Sony, and Sega expressed concerns over the unauthorized distribution of their games in ROM format. Several lawsuits were filed in effect to halt the distribution of emulators and ROMs. Most famously, when Sony sued the developers of Bleem, a commercial PlayStation emulator. While Bleem eventually shut down, this legal battle set an example for future emulation efforts. Now, despite these legal challenges, emulation played a crucial role in preserving gaming history, as older hardware became obsolete and physical copies of games became rare, emulation allowed people to access and study games that would have otherwise been lost. In the 21st century, video game historians and preservationists begin to recognize the value of emulation as a tool for ensuring that these cultural artifacts remained available to future generations. By the 2010s, emulation had not only survived legal scrutiny, but had also became somewhat mainstream. Companies like Nintendo, Sega, and Sony begin releasing official emulators on modern platforms. The virtual console on the Wii and Wii U allow players to purchase and download older games legally, while the PlayStation Classic and Sega Genesis Mini were official emulation devices preloaded with classic titles. 
In addition to these official releases, community-driven projects continue to advance the state of emulation. Open source emulators like RetroArch consolidated the efforts of multiple emulation projects into a single interface, offering users a streamlined way to emulate a wide range of systems from the Atari 2600 to the PlayStation 2. With features like shaders, netplay, and extensive customization options, modern emulation has transcended its original purpose of preserving and replicating gaming experiences. It has become a robust platform for enhancing those experiences. While video game emulation has made incredible strides, it faces ongoing challenges. The legal side of emulating games that are still under copyright remains a big issue. Emulators themselves are legal. But distributing copyrighted ROMs without the permission of the rights holders remains illegal. The challenge of emulating modern consoles such as the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One becomes more complex due to the system's powerful architectures. But I must say, PlayStation 4 emulation is moving along faster than what I expected. Also, it was crazy to see a console that was still being sold on store shelves have two emulators available at the same time, that being the Nintendo Switch. There was the Yuzu emulator and the Ryu Jinx emulator that actually ran games better than the actual Switch did. But Nintendo did eventually threaten both of these emulators, causing them to shut down the projects and remove them from the internet. What surprised me the most is that they let these emulators survive for years before actually going after them. Additionally, the preservation of online based games such as MMOs and live service games poses a new challenge for emulation and game preservation efforts. These games rely on server based infrastructures that, when decommissioned, make the games impossible to play even if the game files are preserved. In spite of these obstacles, the future of emulation appears promising, with the gaming community, historians, and even developers embracing the need to preserve digital culture. Emulation will continue to be an essential tool in safeguarding games' rich history. It has evolved from a hobbyist passion to an accepted means of preservation and celebration of video games' cultural impact. By allowing us to revisit, study, and modify classic games, emulation serves not only as a bridge between generations of gamers, but also as a vital tool for preserving the rich and diverse history. And I'm pretty sure we will see many more new great emulators arise in the future. If you would like to check out any of my personal emulator setup guides, I have them in the description below. And also make sure to check out my Patreon page where you can find some guides on emulation that cannot be shared here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.